have you checked the children? Oh, 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 Hey everyone, welcome back to The Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. And I'm Ian Fuego. Here. And we are back to continue our coverage of the Prom Night series with the one that was actually, oh, well, starting with the one that was actually requested by a patron. Yeah. Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. Hello. So we're going to be discussing part two and part three in this review, just like the in the last one we discussed the original Prom Night and its remake 28 years later. These two are the Mary Lou saga. Mary Lou Maloney. Indeed. So these are the two that deal with that character, so they're good to cover together. Shout out Heather Smith. We are very excited to be discussing this Rutz map. Heather yes. Smith, previously known as Heather Briley. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, we are going to be starting off with Hello Mary Lou Prom Night 2. And I got to say, Fuego, just right off the bat, this is easily my favorite of the series. Same. It's the best of the series. Not only is it the best of the series, but I think that... Even after watching it, you know, I hadn't seen it in years, but watching it now in 2021, that one holds up like a lot of other really high-end 80s horror movies do. Mm -hmm. Like this one could easily be in one of the top 10 80s horror movies if someone really broke them down. Yeah, this was like right when horror was about to start becoming self-aware, I guess, and it does have kind of that vibe to it at least where characters are actually smart and the quips are sharp and there's some really cool setups in this most notably the chalkboard scene i love mm -hmm. that bit I love man that one yeah too. yeah you can definitely sense the nightmare on elm street influence on this Big film time. to to a degree and the fact that they took the series in the supernatural territory in comparison with the original one didn't have any of that really the only close connection is what the fact that it takes place at the same school i think there is like no connection with with the jamie lee one beyond that so but uh, yeah man i dig this movie this one's a lot of fun yeah, so the, the original Prom Night and its remake were killers. Prom Night 2 and 3 is ghosts. Prom Night 4 is a serial killing priest. Mm -hmm. And then Prom Night 5 is demons. Yeah, so, 5 is off the rails, but that would, yeah, it's, it, well, it's pretty fun, actually. We'll, we'll get talk to about that, yeah. 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 So this one, uh, as we both said, it, it's a great movie, and... It starts off at 1957's prom, mm -hmm. where there's a girl named Mary Lou who is brought with a guy, and the guy goes to get them drinks, and when he comes back, she's gone, and she's already making out with another guy behind the stage. And her first guy finds out, and basically she tells him to buzz off. Like mm -hmm. it's the famous line that rings See you through later, the rest. alligator. No, well, it's the fa <laughs> the other famous line that rings through the rest of the series, which is, "It's not who who brought you, it's mm -hmm. who you who leave, leave with." with. Yeah. And so he gets pissed, and when she is named prom queen, he basically tries to drop a stink bomb on her, but ends up lighting her on fire on stage in front of the entire school and she burns while her new man is sitting there just off the stage able to do nothing to save her mm -hmm. and she looks up and sees that it's the guy that brought her that did it before she finishes dying yep. and then that's it and, and mary he's, lou maloney he's horrified is, yeah. because he wasn't intending to hurt her to, nope. to kill her obviously he was just pissed off so. no indeed and so that's that and we flash forward to what is it 1986 or 87, 88, 87 it might have been something like that. so it might have been yeah. just um, late, late you know, 80s, yeah. 30 years later basically yeah. and now the guy that originally brought her is the principal of michael the school ironside michael ironside exactly uh. and then the new guy is the priest that most regularly consults the school so there's this blonde high school student and she's got friends and drama and she goes to try and find decorations to get ready for the prom and ends up finding is it a mirror it's a chest it's, it's like a chest old, yeah it's an old chest so it's an old chest and she frees the spirit of mary lou maloney who then first off acts freely as a spirit for a while while she's trying to take over the body of the girl that freed her and uh she you know causes a couple of ghostly accidents uh, and then eventually does take over this student and tries to live through her again and get her revenge on the two boys that mm -hmm. resulted in her death. Yeah. So that's the long and short of the story without spoiling it. And it's just a good time. The deaths are cool and creative. The effects are well done. Mm. I love a good supernatural story like this. And this might have been one of the original ones that made me love supernatural stories yeah. like this. So Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was a big fan of how the story played out in this one. 
Yeah, and it's it's also interesting because this portrays, like, there's one scene in, in particular with our lead lady and her friend and an issue that she's experiencing, and it's very dramatically captivating, and where, where she's like, what am I going to do because this is this has happened to me and this this asshole guy that she was involved with and stuff so there's also campiness and quirkiness like the nerdy dude who's trying to like you know swoon the other lady who also has a very funny moment with the boat tallying later in the film he's great man i mean these felt like real kids with real issues and you know ups and downs and, and whatever i can't say that i love the the lead girl in this as much but she gets very interesting once the possession goes on mm -hmm. and for the amount of nudity that you see in 80s movies this one most definitely goes for it in that regard so lots of full frontal for yeah. long periods of time yeah yeah more so than pretty much any other entry in the series oh, if i'm 100%. not mistaken so it, yeah. it it goes for it in that regard so you know props to her for being comfortable in her own skin and whatnot but uh, this is just the right amount of camp and gore and just smart self-awareness like i was saying and uh man a, a double feature of like this and even like popcorn that came out a, a, a couple of years later it's when the tides were turning for the screams to eventually come so yeah i don't think i ever saw popcorn popcorn's rad dude yeah yeah again we mentioned the effects a couple times but they really go for it there's lots of gore the finale especially there's especially <laughs> yeah that well the finale just basically turns into a, a poor man's carry in some, yeah, <laughs> yeah, in some ways. Basically, but there is a cool transformation. That when, is what I was Yeah, about. when yeah. Mary Lou actually transforms into the necrotizing form of herself, which is really cool. Yeah. As you mentioned briefly earlier, the biggest effect that stood out to me was the effect where someone gets sucked into a chalkboard. Yeah, and it's and the chalkboard like a water is like swirling kinda, like a water, yeah. uh, like a whirlpool. Yeah. And it's really neat because you see her swirling around and then you see the letters that were on written on the board swirling around too mm -hmm. and you know that had to be done practically so yeah. uh, because it's no digital effects back at the time that would have achieved that so I, I just dug it i was such a fan of how everything happened and, and again the kills were creative and fun and i don't know i dug it I yeah dug and it. there's and there's some interesting nightmare sequences initially like when you know the, the claws are first like kind of going in and the full possession hasn't transpired i mean yeah man this film if you have not seen it i most definitely recommend it best of the series for sure yeah 100 percent. and you don't need to watch the other ones to to enjoy this one now, the and third the movie, bathroom. on the other hand, <laughs> Prom the Night's Last Three, Kiss. The Last Kiss, is wholly dependent on your knowledge of Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. Mm -hmm. uh, because Different it, actors, once though. again, is Mary Lou Maloney coming back to cause havoc. However, it basically ignores the end of the first movie. So at the end of the first movie, tiny spoilers, her gravestone explodes for reasons. And then someone ends up getting taken over. The beginning of this movie, the gravestone explodes, but the second part doesn't happen. Mary Lou's spirit continues to hang around the school and cause issues there instead. Mm -hmm. yep. So they kind of just retcon the end of Prom Night 2. And now it's Mary Lou who has become obsessed with a particular male student that mm -hmm. is not particularly cool, but he starts to kind of become cool through his association with this ghost and he doesn't care that she's a ghost and stuff like that. So this movie is silly. I did not like it very much. And I think deliberately silly too. Oh, it was mad slapsticky for the first two thirds mm -hmm. on purpose, but then they abandon it, which is why the tone is all off through the movie. Yeah. And they try and be clever, silly, like part two was, but they fail at it. So Well, and that was the yeah. nice thing about two was that I, I felt like it balanced the horror and the humor and some of my favorite scary flicks. They can straddle that line and they can do it properly. This one felt almost kinda like parody, man. Mm -hmm. You know, like it was just yeah. that deliberately trying to be goofy. Although some of the lines worked for me. Story we touched on a, a little bit, but there is a girlfriend in place with said dude at the time, and Mary Lou Maloney basically like steals him from her, and she's like, I don't get mad, I bake. So there, there's funny lines in here, and just silly little bits that they go back to, but as far as like any sort of unnerving things transpiring like you have in the second one, and even... To, to a degree in the first film and the remake, which we already talked about, this film for me just didn't have any of those moments. Down to comedy that's been done better before so many ways. For instance, the loudspeaker jokes, which are just airplane, you know, yeah. uh, the, the PA system jokes from airplane, <laughs> uh, but done over a school's PA system. Today's inter-school chess club tournament has been canceled. Club members are asked to report to the library and play with themselves. To, to your point about the lack of scares and the lack of creep factor, 
I mean, when your main antagonist, she's a female in full football gear, killing a guy with a football that turns into a corkscrew that literally drills him into a metal goalpost yeah. somehow. Mm -hmm. It is so silly and stupid. It just, there's no chance for it to be scary. And not only that, but your main character, who you're supposed to be the guy that you care about, is reacting so unrealistically to it all, just like, yeah. Mary Lou, what are you, you killed Why another you guy? Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> what? What are we doing here? It's so stupid. Yeah. And yet, they're playing that while trying to play that he's getting cooler as it's happening, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Through the school. He gets a motorcycle from his yeah. parents because mm -hmm. they're so happy he's performing so well in school because Mary Lou is like calling them with fake updates as a ghost. It's just so all over the place. Beyond and, illogical. And, yeah. yeah, like you said, beyond illogical. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, uh, although still, once again, like some of the silliest bits made me laugh. Like when she's in the nurse outfit and then she starts having sex with him and she's like, the doctor is in. Like there's some lines in this movie. They were just so painfully bad. I couldn't help but laugh. But this is not a, a good movie, even if they were trying to be that sort of just silly stupid sort of thing it's still like, like it doesn't hold up at least for me so. yeah and and believe it or not the way you kill a ghost is not how you'd mm. anticipate killing a ghost not at all. oh and also the music in this was yeah. so over the top and hammy like mm. stupid music at times that mm -hmm. just totally ruined the mood that they might have been trying to establish it's so. strange because the, the the second film basically it brought on like the the greaser biker sort of thing by flashing back to 57 but yet it also had the religious angle and so in this third one it pretty much focuses on that greaser you know 50s sort of angle and then when we get to four which is our next review we're doing it brings back the whole religious aspect so it's weird how you know that that second film that was so good had both of those aspects going on and then for the third and the fourth one they kind of split those themes up for for some reason so i don't know yeah it's strange but three's not good two hello mary lou it's kick ass absolutely so I think that's going to do it for our thoughts on Prom Night 2 and 3, you guys. So let us know in the comments down below if you have any thoughts on these movies. If you haven't seen them yet, if you've just avoided them, again, definitely check out Prom Night 2 and then come back and let us know what you thought. I don't think you need to watch Part 3, but if you want to complete the Mary Lou saga, that's what you got to do. I think it's on like Pluto or Tubi or one of those, so it's free with that. Yeah, yeah there, I mean, you don't have anything to, to risk All of these are on. available to stream somewhere for free with ads or without, so mm -hmm. definitely uh, don't invest money in them necessarily. Negative Although I would, two, buy, two, I would buy I would buy, I would buy a collector's edition, you know, like mm -hmm. a, a Scream Factory or an yeah, Arrow release Arrow or too, whatever. for yeah. sure. Um, so... Yeah, that's going to do it, you guys. Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the movie, or if you enjoyed the review, click the like button and subscribe. Ding that notification bell to make sure you don't miss our review of Prom Night 4 and 5. And then we do plan to record a tier list ranking of the series to come soon after that. So. Yeah, so shout out to our friends up north for this uh, Canadian slasher series for sure. Indeed. So yeah. thanks again. I've been Cecil Laird. Gracias, I mean Fuego. Thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the channel directly as you do. We greatly appreciate it and could not do the show without you. So thank you so much. But until next time, remember guys, stay scared.